Good people who have traveled from villages near and far, lend me your ears. That's disgusting. Hello, it's week four of our Milk Crate filmmaking workshop, and this week I want to talk about sound. I think this is one of the elements that's a little bit overlooked in this sort of uh, independent amateur filmmaking space. We sort of think, well, I've got my camera pointing at my subject, I've done everything I need to do, and not quite. Uh, getting the sound right is really, really crucial. Professional film uh, has a sound operator, it has a sound mixer, it has all of these different people who purely work in the realm of sound. Because it's it's super, super crucial making sure that in films that have script and dialogue, making sure that all of that is clear, so that you know language comes across effectively without the need for things like captions. Making sure that you create the right sense of atmosphere, making sure that Things don't generally sound grating or crappy, for lack of a better word. Art is all about engaging the senses, and sound is one of the most vital senses that we have. For people with hearing difficulty, we still use things like captions to reference various different sounds that are in the film. Uh, everything from language to footsteps, you know, all the sorts of things that, uh, that people with full hearing will pick up on, but they're still important signals to give to uh, all audience members. That's how vital that element is to our engagement with this medium. I mean, when you think about it, even silent movies still had musical accompaniment. They weren't truly silent. Sound is really, really important. So I hope I can at least give you a better understanding of that importance and a few little tricks to try and make your films sound as clear and as clean as possible. The first trick is to control your space as much as possible. So wherever you are, try and make sure that there's as little external sound to what is happening in your scene as possible. This can be really difficult in Sydney because we have planes going over, we have traffic, we have all sorts of things. Uh, if you're filming in public at any one point, you really can't, you know, stop members of the public from being in public uh, and doing things like having conversations, walking, uh, owning dogs, you know, like all of these elements come into play. So as much as you can, try and control the space that you are in to minimize those extra sounds. For example, with me, uh, my dogs have gone to bed, uh, my partner has gone to bed and is with the dog so she can sort of, you know, keep them keep them calm, keep them quiet, and I've asked my housemate not to interrupt. So that's me controlling the space. The other thing is the device that you are using to capture your sound. So if you are filming the whole thing on your phone, then very likely you are capturing the sound on your phone as well. It's important to know where the microphone is on your device. That's what's picking up the sound. So you want that to be clear and uninterrupted. So the important thing is to make sure that you don't have your hand clamped over the bottom there. Because everything's just going to come out muffled. And it'll sound bad and not good. And you want it to sound good is the thing. So make sure that you're not doing that. Make sure that your microphone is nice and clear and unimpeded. The next thing is to make sure that you don't have lots of little extra motions near and on your microphone because those will all make additional noise. So try and keep it still and steady because that's going to help your shot as well. And if you're using multiple phones, then make sure that if you're recording audio that you have your microphone pointed towards your subject. And again, unimpeded, nothing in the way. You want to make sure that you are capturing the sound at the best quality that you can. You probably would have seen a clapperboard in the past that is this, and that is used uh, so that we can synchronize the video and the audio. Uh, back in the day when cameras did not have microphones built in, you would have to uh, you know, record the sound separately and make sure that then you could sync those two up so that they play at the same time. So that the uh, mouth moving and the sound of the voice line up. So that is what the clapperboard is for. And if you don't have a clapperboard, then that is why this will suffice because we can see where the two hands meet and we can synchronize that moment where they hit with 
the sound of the clap. The other reason that we use that is because a clap creates a spike uh, in the waveform. And I will show you what that means later. I know those were technical terms. I will show you physically what they mean. And where, pray tell, will I show you this spike in the waveform? Perhaps I will show you in Rush. Yeah, I just wanted to use that transition again because I really dig it. So let's talk a bit about the use of sound in cinema. As I was saying before, it's a really, really important way to engage the senses of your audience. So part of the reason that silent films had musical accompaniment was because I think it'd be kind of a hard ask to get an audience, even, you know, back in the 1920s, it would have been a hard ask to get an audience in to a room to sit and silently watch moving pictures in silence. I think that would be very unusual kind of uncomfortable in a way. So music enhanced the rhythm and the flow that were uh, achieved in the editing process, as we spoke about last week. But they also kind of guided the emotions of the audience. Music is a really effective way to pluck at the heartstrings of your audience. It has a huge impact on the body. And so I picked an example of a, a piece of music that I find really profound and the effect that that has on a particular scene. So this is from Let the Right One In, which is a Swedish film. I think it captures this sense of young love. It has this this sort of do -do 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 this little flutter to it, which is kind of like that the fluttering of the heartbeat when you're you know around that that person that you're drawn to. It, it just uh, it, it really gives me shivers. It's beautiful and it captures something of the the melancholy and the drive of the film. It's it's just wonderful. What I've done is I've taken out the original audio from this sequence and I've just taken the music track, Eli and Oscar, and I've just placed it over my scene. Boom, like that. Now this is what I was talking about before when I said a wave form. And it is called that because it is, you know, literally the form of the waves that the sound is making. Sound is sound waves, so we measure that with a, a kind of graphic that indicates where the loudest and most quiet points in the sound are. There's these points where things get louder, quiet, loud, 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 quiet. You can see the little, the peaks and the troughs in the waveform. So when you do a clap, you get a clear boom. A very clear sharp spike and that allows you to then sync up the uh, with the clap we'll talk a little bit more about waveforms and what to do with them later I wanted to give a few more examples <laughs> This has to be one of the greatest achievements in the history of the art form. They managed to create the sound of a creature that has been dead for millions of years. And the way that they did this was to mix together the sounds of animals that are very much alive today. The T-Rex in Jurassic Park is a combination of a baby elephant trumpeting, slowed down, an alligator gurgling, and a tiger snarling. That's it. They mixed those sounds together, they played around with the speeds of them, the various different qualities within those sounds, and they created the pretty believable sound of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's bonkers. And, I mean, if you just, like, you know, watch this, watch this sort of moment back without the sound... I mean, the graphic is great, it's obviously quite dated now, but like, it certainly doesn't have as much emotional impact without that. That sound is phenomenal. So that is an example of the kind of visceral impact that sound can have on an audience. 
sound is also super crucial in my favorite genre, which is horror, because instinctually, our lizard brain is always on the lookout for, you know, any kind of danger. It's looking for things to engage the fight or flight response. And one of the main things is listening for, you know, the crack of twigs behind us or something like that. So a movie like The Quiet Place uses sound very effectively to build tension and create the sense of danger. If they are quiet, maybe they'll live. If they are not, Now I know I said a lot about how silent films were not truly silent before, but true silence can also be something that you use in your film. It also has a specific emotional impact because we are not accustomed to it. When was the last time that you experienced genuine silence? It's really, really uncommon. So when you have it in a film space, it is quite a shock. All of this is to say, think about the emotion that you are creating in the audience member when you are using sound and when you are using music. They are crucial tools for engagement. Now, even for free, you have a lot of different options for working with sound, different ways that you can layer it into your film. If we hop over into Internet Explorer, I can show you a couple of useful sites that you can use to enhance your filmmaking. One of them is the Free Music Archive. This is a database of free music. So this is music that has been made by different creatives who have licensed the music through what we call Creative Commons, which basically means that they have put it out into the world and are happy for people to use it for free, as long as they are credited for it. So it's an important thing to make sure that if you are using any music that belongs to other people, even when it is, well, especially when it is a uh, free Creative Commons material, that you credit the original source. In a similar vein is Incompetech, the alias of a guy called Kevin McLeod, who is a composer who makes a lot of this kind of free Creative Commons music. You would have probably heard his tracks before if you've watched things on YouTube or streamers or, you know, any number of people who need access to Creative Commons music. He is a fantastic source because he works in a lot of different genres with a lot of different instruments and he makes cool stuff. So that's another great opportunity. And again, credit his work if and when you use it. The other one is freesound.org. This is a little bit different. Uh, this one requires a login, you register for free, and then you have access to a huge database of sound effects that have been you know recorded and put in by other users of this website so it's a really great resource you won't always find you know the perfect sound that you're after but it is a great way to access a lot of different foley work so let's talk about foley by the way this is the term that is used for uh, any sound that is recorded for the post-production process. So it is not captured in the moment while you are filming the film. It is captured after the fact and then placed over the top of it for things like the sound of violence. Like obviously if I want the sound of someone being punched in the head, I'm not just going to go put a microphone up and then I'm going to punch something else and get that sound effect and then put that over the top to sell the impact of that hit. So we have to find a way, when I pretend to do that punch, we have to find a way to sell it, you know, to make it actually seem real. And besides the other actor going, and you know, kind of like selling it with their own acting, we gotta make that, we gotta get that good punch sound effect in there. So it really seems like you're there watching them get hit. 
And with all of these sound effects, it works exactly the same way as uh, with dropping the music in that I was telling you before. You just uh, take your effect. Maybe we've decided that we don't like this moment of silence in The Last Jedi because you're a heathen. And we go, what this needs is just a big, dramatic... Yeah, much better. It's not, but <laughs> that's an example. Have fun. Just tick some boxes twiddle some knobs like try things out you know this is what we call a non-destructive form of editing any of these boxes you tick any of these things that you change in this program and in most editing programs will not change the original files that you've used it will just combine them in new methods nothing is lost by you experimenting playing around you can always undo things um undo is your best friend make use of it and if your dialogue's truly bad if you've got some horrible hum in the background like i seem to have now then you can do what's called adr which is additional dialogue recording and that is simply re-recording the audio and then putting it over the top which is what i've just done there and that's everything for this week i will see you in next week's workshop <laughs>